Hi, today we're talking about how love and sharing and service connect us to other people. Uh, you might wonder what I mean by service. Well, service could be all sorts of things. So service could be doing the chores you have at home. And you might not think about it this way, but when you do your chores at home, you contribute to your family and that helps your family, um, you know, you stay connected to one another. So you might notice in your family that everybody has chores that they do and that when each person does their chores, it's kind of like working together to make your family work. And if you're all doing your chores at the same time, you can be connected to one another also in that service that you do to one another in that working together to have your family work. You know, when we work together in our family to keep our house clean, for example, then the house is clean for everyone, which is really, really great. But there are all kinds of service. Uh, you know, you can think about when uh, people play tennis, they have to, we call that serving the ball. The first time they hit it, they have to hit the ball that happens in ping pong too, or table tennis. Somebody has to start and they have to serve the ball up to the other person so the other person can hit the ball and then there's a back and forth and we can play the game because somebody serves. Service is, we could also use that word to think about if you, like say your whole family is sitting at the, at the dinner table and then you get up to get water for one person and you bring a glass of water to one person at the table, we say that you're serving them a glass of water. And you know, you might as well get water for everyone while you're doing that. You can serve everyone. So we call that service two. What other kinds of service do you know besides, you know, playing tennis or bringing something to someone else? Sometimes we call it service. We call it civil service when you work for the city. So, or we say you're a civil servant, you're working on behalf of the whole city. If you've ever heard that word civil service, that's what that means, or civil servant, it means working for everyone. Well, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about service and the difference that that can make. So we'll start with just a little story from the Spark Bible. So here's a story called Sheep and Goats. Jesus told his disciples they were like sheep when they cared for each other, and Jesus was their shepherd. They would be like goats if they didn't listen and didn't care. He said, Do you remember when you visited the old man in prison? Oh, yes. He was lonely, the disciples answered. Do you remember when you gave clothing to the children who didn't have anything to wear? Jesus asked. Yes, they were very cold, they remembered. Every time you care for someone, it is like you are caring for me too, Jesus explained. God will welcome you into the kingdom of heaven. The disciples wanted to be like sheep. They knew they would be welcome in heaven. You can find this story in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. This is a story about God's people for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I like music too. I like when we sing. So Phil, Pastor Phil has a song called I'll Do My Best. And that's a song about giving our whole heart to God, our whole heart in service to God and to God's ways and also to our neighbors. Talking about bringing forth the best of what we can in service so that we can be connected to God and to one another. And remember that when we serve, the experience of serving and working together unites us as one. Same way like when you clean your house, that unites your family. When you work in service, that unites us to other people. So here's Pastor Phil. Let's sing, I'll do my best. Lord forever praise I'll praise I'll praise you Lord forever I'll do my best I'll do my best I'll do my best
my best for you. Oh, oh, oh. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. Sir. Sir. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. Sir. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. We also have a story this morning about serving and working together. This is about two friends named Megan and Kylie. It's called Busy Friends. And I want to thank Nora and Paige Kotler. They made all the puppets and they helped with this puppet show. And that reminds me to tell you that you can also help with the puppet show. So if you like what you're seeing and you would like to make a puppet show for our Sunday Worship for Kids, you should just let me know. You can call the church office. You can send me a text or an email. Just let us know that you'd like to do that, and then we'll tell you what you need to do. Okay, here's Busy Friends. Megan had moved to a new town and was trying to like it, but she didn't. There was nothing to do, and she didn't have any friends. School wouldn't start for a few weeks, and Megan's parents were busy with their new jobs. Megan also missed her brother, who was away at college. Every day was long and boring. Today was Monday, and her parents were meeting with someone. Their daughter Kylie was coming, too, and Megan was glad there would be someone else to hang around with. The first thing Kylie said to Megan was, Do you think your parents will let you come to the community rummage sale? We'll have fun. After her parents dropped them off, Megan discovered that Kylie didn't invite her to go shopping at the sale. They were supposed to work. Everything was a mess, and Megan didn't know what to do, but Kylie showed her how to sort things out and put up tables. They emptied the trash, collected bags for customers, and put up signs. Megan thought Kylie's idea of fun was a little weird. When Megan and her parents took a walk that evening... Two neighbors she met at the rummage sale waved to her. On Tuesday, Megan was excited to go play at Kylie's house, but Kylie immediately gave Megan a pair of garden gloves and said, we get to go pull weeds at my piano teacher's house. It'll be fun. Megan couldn't believe Kylie thought weeds were fun. Kylie explained that she always helped out in exchange for her piano lessons. They filled two buckets with weeds, and then they laughed at a cat that followed them among the flowers. 
That evening, Megan's mom said the piano teacher had called and offered to give Megan lessons if she wanted to keep helping in the garden. On Wednesday, Megan helped Kylie walk dogs for, for a friend who had a broken leg. They met three kids at the dog park who would be going to their school. On Thursday, Kylie's mom showed them how to make sugar cookies, and they gave some to the mail carrier and some to Megan's brother at college. After, Kylie said it would be fun to surprise her mom and clean the kitchen. When Kylie called on Friday and asked if Megan wanted to go to the school playground, Megan was curious. What, you just want to play? There's no work involved? Kylie laughed and said, well, there is a service party planned to clean up the playground before school starts. Come on, it'll be fun. Later, after spreading the bark chips, picking up trash and painting the fence, Megan and Kylie went on the swings. As they were swinging, Kylie said, you seem a lot happier than when I first met you, Megan. Megan had to admit, I thought you were weird because you thought work was fun, but now I have friends all over town. I'm going to have piano lessons and my brother loves my cookies. It doesn't seem like work anymore. Helping just seems fun. Do you think you'd like to have Kylie as a friend? She's turning everything into work and helping people. Do you think that you would like that? I think I would like the results of that, that I got to know people all over town and I got to make cookies and I got to have friends and people waving at me. I would like that part. I'm not sure I would like the helping part to start with. Maybe that part grows on you. And when in the story do you think Megan stopped thinking about how unhappy she was. When do you think Megan stopped focusing on herself and, and how unhappy she was and just started doing things? I'm not sure when that happened in the story, but it happened sometime because Kylie noticed that she wasn't unhappy anymore, right? It did happen. And then why do you think the girls liked doing all that work? Because Megan came around in the end. Why, why do you think they like doing work? I think a couple of things. I think it gave them something to do, that they were together working on something. That often is a really good thing. When you, when you have something worthwhile to do and you have a friend there doing it with you, especially if it's work, if it's challenging you and it's re, you have a rewarding feeling from having accomplished something or having participated in something bigger than you. You know, like that thing, like the rummage sale, there were probably a lot of people working and they were part of a lot of people doing a lot of good work. And when you're done with that kind of work, you have a really good feeling, not just about yourselves and the work you've done, but about what that whole group of people can do when they're working together. And what do you think is the best part about serving other people? What do you think is the very best part about doing something for someone else? Hmm. I think for these girls, like getting piano lessons as a reward, that was probably a good part. Um, being recognized and having people wave at you when they see you, that's a good part. But that feeling that you have inside when you're doing good work, maybe that's the best part is how you feel about yourself and how you feel about what you've done. That growing sense of pride that you have, that you matter in the world and that you are actually helpful to people. That can be a really, really great thing. As we prepare to end the lesson and move into a new week, why don't you spend some time this week thinking about how you can serve other people? What is something you can do around your house that would help people and make other people that you live with smile? What's a chore that you could do that you could take away from someone who is always doing that work or always doing that chore? And maybe if you experiment by taking on that chore, then when you're done, you can see what difference it makes to the other people or the other person and how you feel about it. You can see how service binds us together, makes us one, and helps us care for one another and love each other more and more. Let's pray. We'll do a repeat, repeat prayer. So I'll say a part and you can pray it after me and we'll keep going like that. Dear God, Thank you 
that there are chances to serve. Give us friends who like to serve too, so that we can share our work and share our friendship and grow in love towards one another and become one with other people through the service we do. Give us eyes to see how Jesus did that kind of work with other people too. Amen. Before I say goodbye today, I wanted to leave you with a little blooper because it turns out that Paige likes to make the puppets fly. So have a good day. And here's a little blooper from Paige. <laughs>